right, so we've got us a nice machine here that they've tried cleaning and, you know, doing some rub-a-dub on it to get it to work, and it's not working. So let's go take a look and see what we've got going on. It uh, hopefully won't need any more of that. There's nothing better than walking in and seeing the covers off. Really reassures you. I've seen worse. They're not getting up there in the top corners. Got a lot of water in there. Makes me wonder. Is everything in place? Seems to be. All right. I can check. If we plug it in. You can see the condenser coils clean. I've worked on this one on another video prior to. It's uh, been a while since I've been here. I kind of showed them about as much to maintain it so that I don't have to do the small things that they can easily do. So it's a nice cord. It's wired directly. It's an expensive pigtail. All right, so what do we got going on here? Talk to me. Hot gas, sump empty. All right, good deal. Sump. No, we don't need that. All right, sump full. So we know the water switch works. I like to just kind of feel around and listen to what's going on. So we're in the harvest. I believe that's what this one starts out in. Manual harvest. I notice the fan's not kicking on very much for very long. That's on and off awfully quick, which usually means fan switches out or it's low on charge. It's fairly warm back here. It uh, really shouldn't be uh, cycling off. My suction line is not cold at all. My line going into the evaporator plate is fairly cold. Let's grab some gauges. Uh, you know, we want to do the hand touch method before we just go slapping gauges on it and pulling refrigerant in and out of it. Um, the heck's that computer? Warranty, oh, warranty until 2019. All right, so let's go grab some gauges. Something's not right with that fan. We got 490 pounds of pressure there. That's not good. Lead our hoses out a little bit here. And we can dump what we have back in there. But obviously we have a fan switch that's likely bad here. So let's go ahead and kill the power to it. And get this cover off. Yeah, unless we can see where the switch is at, which I think is right. Oh, this is gonna be an easy one. Ouch, gold darn, it's freaking hot. Right here, so. What I'll do is I'll put a piggyback jumper on there, stick it back on there so it doesn't short into anything, and then we'll order a new pressure switch for it. I had to use these just the other day. Now, this fan, doing what it's doing, um, it can still kill the fan when it goes into harvest because it's going to come out of the relay for that part. But far as the pressure being high enough, it's going to run. And that'll at least get it going. I don't know if they're using this for football or what. So, it may not be a big deal that it even runs. So there's the harvest again which it's 84 degrees back here, 85. So that kind of explains that a little bit. There you go, trick it. 
I'll trick it again. So see the fan's off right now and we're in harvest. So the fan's still being controlled by the control board. The fan motor's not hot. It freely spins. That's a 50 watt motor if I remember correctly. So it just finally went into freeze. Fan came on immediately. Pressures are doing their thing. So let's see how this thing does now. I don't know if they've missed with any of the sensors or anything like that. So we've got to make sure that everything's working the way it should. Otherwise our name will be on it after we leave. I think they just pour the stuff in and call it a day. Let's go ahead and close this back up so we don't let all that heat in there and we've got an accurate reading. It's been a while since I've done a Scotsman. I always get confused when I do that though. So let's go ahead and start the stopwatch and watch this for a touch and see where we're at. Fan's holding in there at about 289, which is 114. It's about 90 degrees now. A little more accurate if we do it back here. It's 114, it's about 24 degrees, 23 degrees over ambient. Sounds about right for head pressure. And then our VAP's dropping. Pressures are starting to steady out here a little bit, running about a six degree of VAP. We're at about 18, 19 minutes, so technically it'd be about 20 because I didn't start this immediately. Need to check and see what our thickness is right now. It's gotta be getting close. I will say you don't want to try to check that with that cover off. It will not work very good most of the time. Yeah, it looks like it screwed with it too bad. You can hear some clicking. So it should be getting ready to go into a harvest. Yeah, right about now. I don't like it um, going too far and all that clicking. Usually that's likely to tear apart your plates in here and then uh, you start losing the center dividers and stuff which will cause harvest issues and things like that. When I was taking the cover off, this is such a poor design compared to the maintenance walk, you can't get in there to adjust it. So when I did that it happened to go right into defrost when I had the cover off which canceled it out. So we're going to force this into harvest now. Let's stop the watch and reset it. These guys are not as critical about their timing as what some of them are. You can see the fan shut off during harvest, so it doesn't really matter that we uh, tied it solid like they did because the power is being killed in the board before it gets to the switch. And uh, we're building up some heat here. You can hear the water being added, and they're still running the water across the coil. And there it goes. Boom. Very good. I'm thinking we're probably fine. They've cleaned it, and honestly, it don't look too bad. I mean, I'm kind of anal about the way I do stuff, but uh, don't look too bad. Just sort of that switch, and then we'll have to come back. Let's get on to the next call. And this is gonna sound like a really dumb tip, but this is primarily for the newer guys. What I usually do, and you've seen me do it, when I hook my hoses up, I will bleed suction side to the yellow hose, then I will close it. I'll open up my high side, bleed it to the yellow hose, and I'll seal it by closing it. All air has been pushed out of the system, completely sealed up. Now I'm done. Critically charged system, yeah, not really. Not near as much as with some of them are. It's 21 ounces. That's not three ounces or two ounces. So from right here, we're coming off hot gas. So there's not gonna be that much. Gas is nowhere near what liquid is. So hot gas, we're gonna dump it into the suction side Watch our lines drop down. I like the sight glass because you can see what's going on down here. Once that's done, I like to disconnect. Everything's been dumped back into the system. I like to valve off. I prefer Yellow Jacket. They're some of the best hoses out there. And I prefer the ball valve. So right there, for the most part, it's the most you're gonna lose other than that little bit there. So that's a tenth of an ounce probably if, if that so that's how I unhook my hoses that's how I get away using six ho foot hoses without worrying about losing things that's how I switch between refrigerants without cross-contaminating one refrigerant to the other which 
if you know anything about these blends, half these refrigerants are blended with 34A, 134A, 123, 32, all kinds of different refrigerants, but obviously they've got the license to do that. So anyhow, that's how I do it. And I thought I'd throw that in there real quick. Like I said, we're out of here. Let's get on to the next one. So we're back to change out that pressure switch here that we found bad. So we could pinch it off, but a lot of times it's so difficult to get that pinch off tool in there. And it usually looks ratty. Went ahead and just pulled the refrigerant out. We've got our new switch right here. And even the switch, generally what I end up having to do is swedge it out. So another reason why I prefer just to un, uh, unsweat it and change it. So that's what we got going on. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot you can do there with the oil. And it's really not a whole lot you can do as far as nitrogen because it's not like it's going to flow through this thing. So we're just going to get this thing heated back up, slide it into place. You want to make sure you don't overheat your end here. switch just in case for the most part it shouldn't be too hot yeah it's not too bad there's our jumper we had so we're gonna go ahead and take that off obviously all right so all we gotta do is get the uh, filter dryer changed and pull the vac on it we went ahead and pulled the vacuum on it got the filter dryer changed got it recharged back up 21 ounces Everything zero it off. I'm gonna plug this thing back in and make sure it still runs. The pressure switch is coming up. I think about 250 area, 230. It's a little bit lower than the Manitowoc, I see. And it would probably help if we put it on the right refrigerant. Pressures as our temperature drops starting to freeze. Pan hasn't had to kick off once yet. We're staying in that mid 90s, high 90s. So we're all set to go. We'll wrap this one up. All right, so we've got us a freezer here. There's quite a few of them in this building. So we're just gonna check it and see what's going on. But basically the system's not running. It's just got here. Let's take a look and see what's not uh, getting power and why. Let's see what we got here. does not look like it's tripped. Switch is on. It's not in defrost. Okay, what do we got here? 227, 235, 235, and 233. So we've got the juice to that point. No uh, power indicator there. Clock's getting 235 be one of our switches here it's the best logical we're not getting any call for it to run there on the uh, coil so it's not getting a thermostat call most likely our evaporator fans are calling each one of them's got power on them so we got our evaporator fans power block to there should defrost heaters which are these two here here is the pump down switch. We need to find our thermostat, high pressure, low pressure. I go on solenoid on five. Five goes out and six comes back. So if they wired it that way, there's five. 
All right, we got our solenoid here on seven and five, which when we go over there, we check for voltage. Seven is right here. You can see the number and five is right there to the left of it. And you've got nothing at all. So you check your thermostat here, which is between five and six. So you go here to five and six and we're closed on that circuit. So after that thermostat, it comes up, goes through the defrost timer. We just follow it along. It should come out of the defrost timer. It comes over to C6, which is contactor. So maybe our contactor's not pulling in. Let's see if we got power on our contactor. That's C6, which is out of four. This is all live, so you don't want to get in there and play too much. Got the protected leads here so we don't have any arc flash. Which luckily this is only 200 and some odd volts. We have no voltage to the contactor, so it's not an issue with the contactor as of now. So backtrack off of that. Let's go up to number four. Let's go to N to four. I have power coming from N to four, which is up here. So into four, we get 235 volts, which you know means that we're getting power out of that. So four, which all these wires are the same color, which is really wonderful. So come out of four, it should come straight down to the contactor. So according to that, you got one coming down to six, you got another one coming down to the contactor. So depending on where that's at, that should be one goes over to six. I bet you that's it right there. This one here, somebody's already kind of cut these up. So kind of crazy, I got too many dang wires all bundled up. So I tracked it down, one comes down to the fans, the other one comes down to number six, which is what we said, goes out on six, which should go to our, to our thermostat. So we've got power coming down to here, two in. 236 there so we got power going out to which number six should be our thermostat going out it should be coming back on five which is this one here so we can go here on five to in 236 coming back on that so that's kind of crazy that is number six and number seven there six and sevens on the same one so one's going to the lipid line solenoid, which looks like it's this one right here. I wish we could have about seven more red wires. So there's liquid line solenoid on the one, and the other one is right here, which comes over and goes to there, which we've already checked that. We don't have any power to our oil safety there which is right here the oil safety is getting power from the compressor module which is normally open i just verified i have power on 16 and 15. obviously i'm not getting power back from the module some reason the module is tripped got to see if the compressor is hot i haven't dug into that far so we're just kind of going through the wiring but we should be able to check power on f2 and 14 which 14 should be coming back to probably up here, I bet you. Right there's 14. So on line, so let's go. To, let's go to line there. To compressor two or to uh, fuse number two. And we actually got power there. Compressor module here. We verified that we have power on T1 and T2, and we are open on M1, M2. So when we come down here to this. I said we made sure to see if we got power to that we got it going to it but we don't have it coming out of it so the modules tripped for some reason now I got to find out why it's tripped if we got a sensor inside that's not happy because basically I don't know if they show yeah they really don't show anything in the compressor module where it goes to so that kind of turns into something different so we're we got something causing that module to be open. I found the paperwork finally. I wasn't looking very hard. We've got it right here on the back side of the cover, blind. 
500 to 2400 ohms is what it should be between common. So here is common coming down, feeding all these thermistors, and then it goes back to each one, S1, S2, S3. So we've got common there. This one right here, I had 1700, 1728. And then here we had 1948 and I believe this other one was 1948 1980 so we are technically where we should be at and it's not closing we're gonna see if we can get us a new uh, new protector here I'm big into making sure you're positive on your diagnosis so that you can pick up any other parts so what I went ahead and did is jumped it out just momentarily flipped on the power it kicked right on, so it tells us we don't have any other components that I can think of that are acting up. That way, since I'm going to the supply house, I don't want to go get that and then have to come right back again and go back again, back and forth, wasting time. So we got our new module kit here. We got the power back off. I went ahead and turned it back on so that it could circulate the cold air in the room. No sense of having it completely not running, circulating. Made in Germany. But for the most part, it's the same thing. So we've got two wires here, which were for the voltage coming in, L1, L2. So we'll just copy that right there. They do not give you hardly any extra room whatsoever. And all that is is a bunch of thermistors in the windings. And it's monitoring that temperature and based off of the resistance it knows what that temperature is and that's when it decides to call it quits or not and since this is a very expensive little protector i am going to do this by hand because i don't want to take a chance of cracking the shell or anything which it probably won't but i ain't taking a chance and that right there i'll just make sure some of these other wires here are nice and tight we've already checked the resistance of the presser made sure nothing was uh shorted to ground things like that and voltage wise this is capable of doing both i believe 120 or 220 volts which that connection is the same for either or 220 208 and 240. music to my ears sight glass hopefully fills up here real quick there goes the other fan goes into this big old monster building warehouse and uh, keeps uh, the boot cold. I'm going to watch it for a little bit make sure it doesn't flash off but I was here the other day and I checked the sight glasses when I was trying to find out which unit it was and uh, they were all solid then so they should be all right. So far everything looks really good. We've got sight glass full. I want to see it pump down and shut off that way we know that part's working. The old flipperoo, and she shuts off. Good deal. Okay, let her rip. There she goes. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap this one up. We're gonna probably add this on with another video. So, if it ain't added on with another video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one.